Welcome back. Oh, I was just about to say welcome back to the Weedy Garden, but I'd say welcome to the beach today. On this video, I'm going to show you how to make some homemade fertilizer with ingredients from the ocean. You need some seaweed, some fish, and some prawns, or shrimps as they call them in America. Welcome back to my channel. It's a beautiful day on the beach today. It's nice to get away from the Weedy Garden actually. So this story started off again when I was just minding my own business in the garden when the phone rang. This time it was a gentleman called Nick. Nick grew up on the beach, he's been surfing most of his life and he told me this wonderful recipe how you can make your own homemade fertilizer from the sea. So he's been using lactobacillus bacteria just like I have in the weedy garden but he has a little bit of a different recipe. So thanks Nick for showing me how to do this and on this video I'm going to share it with you guys out there. Okay, next step I've got to catch myself a fish. Alright, little day on the beach fishing. If you haven't seen that previous video, you want to win a food forest, you better go and check out that video too. Because we're giving away a food forest, a complete food forest. I think I've got one. I think I've got one this time. Oh, oh no. The grubs. I've only got some more. I just got some more seaweed. So I'll have to go out to the co-op, I think, and, and buy a fish that somebody else has caught, I think. Because I'm not a very good fisherman. I've been standing here for hours. Now all I've got to do is find some shrimps. Actually, we call them prawns in Australia. Alrighty. So I'm just going to trim the seaweed up a little bit because I don't want this hold fast part. This is the part that holds fast to the to the ocean floor. So just chop those off and um, and fill up the bucket with the seaweed. And there we go. So that was easy collecting all those ingredients. All right, so we've got a seaweed here. And seaweed, that's got our trace minerals. Okay, and you can say that this is good for the roots. So let's just call this the root one. And then we've got our fish, our fish bones and heads. That's our nitrogen, okay? Nitrogen. And then we've got our prawn shells. And it's important that the prawn shells are raw. You don't, want, you don't want to cook the prawn shells. You want to have the raw prawn shells. It's got to do with the proteins in the shell. So if you cook the prawn shells, it denatures them, which means it kind of destroys the protein in it, okay? So raw prawn shells. But all we do is we put one liter of salt water in each of these buckets just to start off with. I'll just go and get another one. They say the salt water is a very balanced environment. With all the micronutrients and vitamins and minerals, the ocean is a perfect balanced ecosystem. Like everything washes off the land into the ocean, all the minerals, which gives it that nice balance. All right, now we need some molasses. And we need equal part molasses as we do weight with our things. So what I'm gonna do, we wanna have equal weights, like equal weight fish, 
and the same weight molasses, so they weigh about the same. I put the water in first because I want to mix the molasses with the water, otherwise the molasses is kind of too gooey. I want it sort of diluted a bit so it gets a bit more watery. It's easier to mix then. Right eh? So I want to take the same weight molasses as you've got ingredients. So I've got about three kilos of fish. I need three kilos of molasses and one liter of molasses weighs one and a half kilos. So I'm gonna have two of these, okay? This is a very messy business, this one. This molasses is dripping everywhere. It's kind of fun, actually. I feel like I'm in play school again, you know? That's one. Get this ready. Here we are. One more. This is, this is going everywhere. <laughs> it's not easy doing this shooting out on the wind and on the beach and everything, but it's a little bit... It's nice having a bit of diversity from the weedy garden. I might have to bring this a bit closer so it doesn't drip everywhere. There's going to be some little animals on the beach tonight that are going to find this molasses and they're going to have a little party. All right, molasses is in. The next process is to just mix this molasses up with the water a little bit so it's kind of a little bit diluted. And this is the fun part. It's all squishy and feels really nice in your hands. I actually feel like I'm in a kindergarten again, playing in the mud this time. Just do that with all three. All right, the next thing is the lactobacillus bacteria. I'm gonna just go and wash my hands down on the beach first. Okay. All right, nice and clean again. So the next step is to just put in the ingredients, but the sun's in my eyes now, so I might just turn the camera around. So now it's time to put my ingredients in, but first I'm gonna put in the mother brew. And uh, we know what the mother brew is. But this is Nick's mother brew actually. He makes mother brew very similar to what we make, but this is basically the lactobacillus bacteria with molasses in it. No water. So when you make your curd and your whey, you chuck away your curd and you keep your whey, this is 50% whey and 50% molasses. We don't need that much. We don't need that much because bacteria double in population every 20 minutes, all right? And so what's in here is like a couple of hundred thousand million bacteria. But as soon as we put them in there and add water, then they're gonna multiply, all right? Right now they have molasses and they don't have any water, so they don't have any more space to multiply. So they're just sitting here dormant, okay? But as soon as we take them and put them in there and add water, there's more space, so they're just gonna multiply and multiply and multiply. So it doesn't really matter how much of the lactobacillus bacteria you put in, but we're just gonna put in 100 mils in each all right, and this, these are smart little bottles that Nick's designed, so you can just squeeze it until it gets 100 milliliters. See, there's 100 mils. Ooh. Now just 100 mils more for the next one. In there. And the last one here gets 100 milliliters of the mother brew, which is lactobacillus bacteria, or just plain straight old whey. So what we do is we just pour in our ingredients. We're gonna pour the prawn shells in. Like that. And we'll chuck our fish, fish in, our fish bones and heads. Watch how it doesn't splash everywhere. It's good. And then the seaweed. And the seaweed, you might be thinking, do I need to chop it up? All right, do I need to chop it up into small pieces? No, you don't really. Because if you look at the seaweed, see how the seaweed is all flat? There's lots of surface area on that. And if you chop it up, you're only going to make a tiny little bit more surface area. So you don't need to chop it up. And there's like tons and tons of microorganisms living on the surface of the seaweed. So it'll all come in the bucket. All right, so just chuck it in the bucket. Three kilos. All right. Look, I'm going to take these back home and I'm going to put water in them when I get back home because I've got beautiful fresh creek water. All right. If I go up here and get some water from the town behind me, it's going to be full of chlorine. And I can use that if I let the bucket sit overnight or let it sit for a day and let that chlorine evaporate. But they use other stuff in the water as well in the cities to keep it pure so you don't get sick. So before I close this up, I want to show you how we put a little hole in the top so that, because when these start to ferment and start to work, it starts to make a gas. So I want to put a little hole in the top of this to let the gas out. So I just get the drill and put a little hole in it. 
see that? So you've got a little hole in there, right? And then you get this micro pour tape. You get that from the chemist and just take a little bit off and stick it on the hole there, see? That'll stop anything that you don't want to come into your drum. And if you want to be a bit more fancy, you can also get one of these little airlocks. But they cost about $8 and the tape cost about eight dollars too but you can do probably a couple of hundred barrels with the tape but you can decide that's nice and then i'll let them sit in a nice cool dark spot up in the garden it's important they don't get hot and it's important they don't get light so if you've got white drums like this, I just get a black plastic bag, like a black garbage bag to put over it to keep the light out. So I let them sit in the dark, cool spot for about three months and then they're ready to go. Then you can strain all the material out, put it in a bucket with a tap on it. And you can water it on your plants once every couple of weeks. And you want to put 100 milliliters in a 10 liter watering can. So it's 100 to one. So there's enough fertilizer here to last me many, many, many months these little bacteria are going away and they're chewing away at the material we put in here breaking it down collecting it in their stomachs so when you put it in a watering can and water it on you've got a bacteria that's coming down in the soil with a bunch of goodness in its stomach and as it comes into the soil it's going oh where's the sugar where's my molasses so what it does is it goes towards the root because the roots excreting the sugar it's making the sugar from the photosynthesis remember and the bacteria will come up to that little root thinking that I'm gonna get some sugar and the root will just go and suck it in. And that process is called rhizophagy. Rhizophagy. It's a process of how the, the plants actually get the nutrients in through their roots. When I put water in this, something will happen, it's called quorum sensing. The bacteria will have more space and they'll start to eat. And they start to poo and they start to wee and that smell and that taste of poo and wee in the air in the in the environment it kind of gets them all excited and they think well everyone's pooing and pissing everywhere there must be lots happening here so let's get going and let's multiply and that triggers them and that makes that explosion of bacteria it's called quorum sensing right it's like i just call it the bacteria party when there's food and there's sweets and there's room it's time to party so three months in this bucket and we'll have gazillions and gazillions of these bacteria ready to go on the garden and feed our plants. So just go like that. And I just want to show you Nick's stuff because you can't buy it in the post. You can't buy it online because it's a, it's a living thing, right? So you can't send it in the post because these will, maybe if they get hot, they'll expand. But if you're living in the Byron Shire or if you're living in the Northern Rivers, you can buy them at the farm in Byron. Or you can go onto Nick's website and I'll leave a link in the description to Nick's website and it's called farmforcefield.com.au but you can't really send it in the post so that's why we're showing you how to make it yourself on this video okay but um, it's easy to make yourself so why wouldn't you want to do that see everybody thanks for watching enjoy your gardens enjoy your lives it's important and uh, enjoy your homemade fertilizers. Save yourself some money.